You know, my vision was just a four string in the beginning. And Anthony Jackson, who was a colleague of mine at the time, a friend, uh, was thinking of getting a bass. You know, we, we saw a lot of basses, Bob Cranchard, Stanley Clark, uh, you know, some other names. Uh, and then Anthony, you know, had, had borrowed one of my four strings for a while. And then he tried a, a one pickup bass, which we made first. He said, I want two pickups. Then, he, then we made a two pickup model after that, the second run. Now he wanted a six string. So that was like, that was a challenge, you know. I mean, all I knew was four string. So he said, you know, he had, he had one or two made by Carl Thompson, but they weren't working. Could I have a look at them, you know. I said, well, show me the Carl Thompson one that you have, and let me have a look at it, and let me see, you know, what's right, what's wrong, what I would do and not do. So he showed me the Carl Thompson bass, very narrow neck. I forget the body was maybe just a chunk of mahogany, but I looked at it, and I says, okay, I've seen enough. That's not going to help me. I'm not going to do anything like that. And uh, we made a few of those sixes. And then, you know, we went on to this model, uh, the BSR, probably in the uh, later 80s, I think. And uh, I decided that 18 millimeters, and with the 9 millimeter was always a nut spacing, but 18 millimeter, 9 to 18, would be the spacing for the 5 and 6 string bass that we were going to make going forward. Uh, so this became sort of a standard. So 9 to 18 millimeters is our standard. And a lot of stuff that we do uh, became close to standard with other companies, whether they're building in their garage or big companies. And, uh, you know, they, they can copy all the specs they want. But to make the bass, you have the feel. And the better the player, the more he can feel what the feel is, you know. Uh, we don't feel we've been uh, put out of business by anybody. We still make what we make, and it's pretty unique. I want to make the instrument that has a sound for our customers. You know, the guy said, oh, it's the best bass for R&B. Oh, it's the best bass for Greek music. It's the best bass for Latin music. And I'm thinking, you know, it's the best bass for gospel music. I'm saying, is your B-flat different than his B-flat? You know, B-flat's B-flat. So just because, you know, you're playing something different or the venue is different, doesn't mean the sound has to be different. It does have to be a good sound that can cut, can blend, and it, it, it's going to be uh, welcomed. You know, there, there are times when, I remember some years ago, I won't mention names, a guy went to a studio in the middle Atlantic, and he came in with this real expensive bass, you know, top of the line, of course, who knows how much. And the studio had trouble getting a tone. It was just a little simple recording, maybe a jingle or whatever. So they called the store nearby that sold Smith bases. They said, can you rent this a Smith base? Because that's what the studio wanted. And they said, no, we don't rent them. But we can recommend a Smith base player in town. So they, they, the guy who was the top-notch guy, higher level than the guy that replaced them, you know, came in with a Smith base and did the job, and they were happier than you can imagine. Not because they didn't get the better player. The other guy was a good player, was good enough, but he had a sound. He had the sound they can work with. So, you know, Fender is where the sound, but you know, in the old days, you go in the studio, and the guy's got 15 pre-EQs for the Fender, and if you come up with a different bass, you gotta look the EQ out, you know? So I, I wanted to have these basses sound like what it sounds like coming out of the big speakers, or one studio had this big uh, fiberglass cornucopia horn, I mean, massive sound. And I wanted my bass to sound like that, out of a polytone mini boot. <laughs> you know, because that's what you, you might take on a gig, that or an Ampeg or whatever. Uh, less maybe the high end that you need a horn for. So, uh, 
you know, what the sound of a Smith bass is, you know, uh, it's the sound of the bass, I think. It's the sound of the, the post-EQ'd studio bass, pre-EQ in a live amplifier. So you don't need to be in the studio of a half million dollars of equipment to get a tone. You can just plug this into any decent amp today and the tone is there. And uh, I don't think I have to prove that.